संबंध आरंभ कर अनुग्रह हदर श्रवणेट संसारे पट आशीर्वाद शुद्ध किरण शक्ति 
ಏವಾಯಿಲ್ಲಾಪಟ ಸಮನಂತರ ವಿತ್ವ ಸಮನಂತರ ವಿತ್ವ ಕೆಲ ಧಹಂ ಮಾಬೋಧಿರ್ ಉಪಕಾರ್ಯ ಕ್ಲಸ್ ಪಿಹಿಟಾವ 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 ಅಧಿಷ್ಠಾನ ಅತಿಕರಗಾಂತ ಇವಾಗ ಇಂ ಸದ್ಧರ್ಮೇ ಶ್ರವಣೆ ಕಟದ್ದಿ ಪಿಂಗೋತ್ರ ಅಪಿ ಯುತುಗಮ ಕೋಕಿ ಮಕ್ಕಿ ಅನಂತ ಸಂಸಾರಿ ನಂಗ ಅಪಿ ತೆ ಕಾಪು ಬಿರ್ಸ ಪಿಂಗೋತ್ರಿ ಅಪಿ ಇಷ್ಟಾಂತ ದೇವಿತಾವೆಲ್ಲ ಇವಾಗ ಏಮ ಬುದ್ಧ ಸಾಸಿನ ಆರಕ್ಷಾಕರನ್ನ ನಾವು ಬಾರ್ಗಾರ ದೇವಿತಾಗು ದೇವ ಮಂಡಲೆ ಅಕ್ಕದ್ದ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಮಂಡಲೆ ಅಕ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಬಿರ್ಸ ಅಕ್ಕದ್ದ ಈ ಸದ್ಧರ್ಮೇ ಶ್ರವಣೆ ಕರಂಟ್ ಪೆಹದು ನಾವು ಬುದ್ಧ ಸಾಸಿನ ಹೆಸರುಗರನ್ನ ನಾವು ಇದೇ ವಿದ್ಯುತ ಬಿರ್ಸ ಅಕ್ಕದೇ ಐ ಕುಮಣ ಭಾವ ಕುಮಣ ದನ ಕುಮಣ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತ ಮೇ ಮಹೋದಯತಿ ಮೇ ಹೋದು ಸದ್ಧರ್ಮ ಸಾಕಚ್ಚ ಸಮ ಧಾಮ ಸ್ವಭಾವ ಸಮ ಸಹ ಸಂಬಂಧ ವಿತ್ವಾಧೀಗ ನಿತ್ವ ಋತು ಸದ್ಧರ್ಮ ಶ್ರವಣೆ ಕರಗಿನ ಋತು ಸೌಹಾನ್ ಸಕದಾಗಾಮಿ ಅನಾಗಾಮಿ ಅರಿ ಹೆಚ್ಚಿನ ಮಗ ಬಲ ಪೂರ್ಣ ಕರಗಣೆ ಅವಶ್ಯ ಈ ಅವಶ್ಯ ಪಸುತಲೆ ಸಕಸ್ಕರ ಗಣಿತ್ವ ಕಿನ ಅಧಿಷ್ಠಾನ ಅತಿ ಕರಗ ಅಂತೆ ಇವಾಗ ಎಂ ಸೀರಂ ದೇವಿಯ ಬ್ರ ದೇವಿಯಾನ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮಿಯಾನ್ ದೇವ ಮಂಡಲೆ ಅನ್ನ ಸೀರು ದಿನ ಮೇ ಉತ್ತಮ ಹಂಸ ಭಾವಟ ಆಶೀರ್ವಾದ ಕರತ್ವ ಆಶೀರ್ವಾದ ಕರತ್ವ ಆಶೀರ್ವಾದ ಲಭಾದಿತ್ವ ಕಿನ ಅಧಿಷ್ಠಾನ ಅತಿ ಕರಗಿನ ಸೀರು ದಿನ ಮನ ದೇವಿಯ ಅಂಟ ಆರಾಧನಾ ಕೃಪ ಸೀರು ದಿನ ಮತ್ತೆ ಮನಸಿನ ದೇವಿಯ ಅಂಟ ಆರಾಧನಾ ಕರ ಸಮಂತ ಚಕ್ಕವಾಲು ಅತ್ರ ಕಂತು ದೇವತಾಜಸ ಸುನಂತು ಸಕ್ಕಮುಖದ ಧಮ್ಮಸವನ ಕಾಲು ಅಯ ಬಂತ ದಮ್ಮಸವನ ಕಾಲು ಅಯ ಬಂತ ದಮ್ಮಸವನ ಕಾಲು ಅಯ ಬಂತ ಉತ್ತಮ ಪುರೀಸವು ಬುಧು ಪಿಯಾನಂದಹಂಸ ಉಭವಹಂಸೀಟ ಮಮ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಕರಮಿ ಮಾಗೆ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರಯ ವೇವಾ ಪರಮ ಪುರೀಸವು ಬುಧು ಪಿಯಾನಂದಹಂಸ ಉಭವಹಂಸೀಟ ಮಮ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಕರಮಿ ಮಾಗೆ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರಯ ವೇವಾ ಖಿಲೇಸ್ ಸತುರನ್ ಪರದವು ಬುಧು ಪಿಯಾನಂದಹಂಸ ಉಭವಹಂಸೀಟ ಮಮ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರ ಕರಮಿ ಮಾಗೆ ನಮಸ್ಕಾರಯ ವೇವಾ ಸಾಧು 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 ಸಮಟಮ ಉತ್ತು ತಿರುವಂ ಸರನಮ ಉತ್ತು ತಿರುವನೆ ಸಮವತ ಸಮಗಿಭವಗಿನ್ನ ಅದ ದಿನ ನಿವಿ ನಿವಿ ಸಮಟಮ ಉತ್ತು ನಿವನೆ ಸುವಯಮೇವಾ ನೀವ ಶೀಲದಿನ ಆಟೋ ದಿವ್ಯಾನ್ ಬ�್ಯಾನ್ ಸಹಿತ ಸದ್ಧಾರ್ಮೇ ಶ್ರವಣೆ ಕರಣ ಸೀರು ದಿನ ಆಟ ಅದಿತ್ಯಂ ಶ್ರವಣೆ ಕರಲ ಉತ್ತು ಸೋಹಾ ಸಕದಾಗಮಿ ಅನಾಗಮಿ ಅರಿ ಹತ್ಕಿನ ಮಗ ಫಲ ಪೂರ್ಣೆ ಕರಗಿನ ಉತ್ತು ನಿಬ್ಬಾನ ಪರಮ ಸುಖಿನ್ ಸುಖಿತರ ವೀಮ ಸದಹ ಧೈರ್ಯ ಶಕ್ತಿ ಆಯು ಅನ್ನ ಸಬ್ಬರ ಪಡಿವಾನ ಪ್ರಜ್ಞಾಕಿನ ಪಂಚಾಯತ ಕಾರಣ ಪೂರ್ಣೆ ವಿತ್ವಾ 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 ಆಶೀರ್ವಾದ ಕರ್ಣ ವಿಲಾಸ್ ಹಲೋ ಓಕೆ ವಿಲಾಸ್ ಯು ಮೇ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಯುವರ್ ಸೆಷನ್ thank you uh, thank you uh, swamin vanse uh, tervan sarnay to all 
let me start with the vandana and uh, today i thought about covering some of the from the basic of the buddha dhamma uh, so that uh, people who have joined new or who have uh, some information can also gain and uh, over the every week i will be taking one aspect uh, of it and then and then uh, we can cover each one aspect of uh, the of the buddha dhamma so uh, let me start with the the vandana नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सबुस् नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सबुस् नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत सबुस् एज पार्ट ऑफ इंट्रोडक्शन वॉट आई वुड लाइक टू ऑलसो एक्सप्लेन इज ऑन ईच वन ऑफ दिस वंदना लाइक द Uh, why do we do this vandana and how it helps in the meditation and also how it helps a person to clear a uh, lot of uh, kleshas or the impurities what has been ac- accumulated so uh, vandana is uh, actually has three letters that is v andha and na na is nyaya so that is the theory or uh, that is the that is the procedure andha is a blindness so almost all of us are in blindness of moha that is what covers us and uh, then uh, we can't see the raga and dvesha which uh, gets created all the time so vanda v is for vyaya that is to remove so uh when we say we are in we are doing vandana it means to say within our hearts in the hadayavattu we are trying to see whether uh when we uh, offer the the prayer to buddha uh, the bhaveya buddha that is one who can remove the bhava uh, whether we are able to see the the blindness being removed so with that let me uh, start my session on what i wanted to discuss and also i'll be covering uh, some of the aspects of other uh, gatha uh, today uh, so that uh, we can see how scientifically the buddha dhamma helps us in reaching nibbana so these are the three topics what i had uh, thought about which i had uh, shared it with uh, swami nwahan say what is buddha dhamma and other dhamma uh, how similar or is it different and what are the varieties in the buddha dhamma there are the majorly there is this uh, theravada and mahayana and major time i will be spending on the purpose of human life and how precious it is and i would uh, request uh, each one of you can interrupt me can ask me questions and we can make this into a discussion forum so that we can see how we can experience it so let me start with uh, dhamma the meaning of dhamma in pali or in sanskrit in, in sanskrit it is dharma so we can put it as dharayati dharayati dhamma that is one which can hold uphold is uh, the dhamma <coughs> so dhamma becomes the teaching or the principle once somebody follows can attain whatever he or she would like to achieve as an example if we take a school there is a principle uh, or the procedure or the practice which the student has to follow from the nursery or the first grade to the 10th grade to the 11th grade or 12th grade till the college or the university or till he gets a job or he or she gets a job so there is a principle and practice that needs to be followed and there is a test at end of each uh, session uh, or the or every 6 months or a year or uh, every month whichever however the school has formed or the 
university has formed and then the person takes up the exam and then he is uh, said to have passed the exam with uh, distinction or he has done a first class or he has passed or he has failed so this uh, helps in understanding where the person is uh, in terms of his knowledge on the school level and how he is implementing it as a practice in his life similarly each dhamma represents different religious identities which has got created so if we were to look at uh, various uh, philosophies which existed uh, uh, before buddha and uh, during buddha and after buddha uh, we can conclusively have uh, six philosophies and then there is one philosophy of uh, materialistic called as ajivikas so in the in the philosophy what was followed before buddha where alara kalama and uh, and the other teacher of buddha used to follow where either of one of the uh, one of the schools where uh, jhana is the is the major major uh, uh, you know teaching along with that how to understand the world the nature of of things and then uh, what progresses what does not progress what exists what does not exist so they came up with uh, three major branches uh, one is that there is a entity which uh, continues from each uh, uh, state uh, like a human state into next human state to next human state because the those people who used to meditate used to go back to their previous birth pubbe nivasa where nivasa where they were able to see their uh, their previous lives and that is how they found out that uh, they can see the the soul or the gandhava not changing form for a long period of time and then they considered that uh, that is what moves one life to another and they also believed in the karma theory and uh, in that way doing good deeds gives good uh, good uh, uh uh result and doing bad uh, deeds gives bad results the second kind of the of the philosophy was that there is nothing that exists so after this life uh, we can be doing whatever we want to do and then uh, uh, there is heaven and uh, there is hell and depending upon how a person has performed and uh, the person is given hell or heaven and the third kind was a materialistic view of uh, how we come or how we go is of no need to understand that and then uh, what exists is you just enjoy your life and and go so during the time of the buddha uh, he tried to explain the concept to various uh, people because there were a lot of philosophies there were around 62 philosophies in each one of one of this kind so that's the reason uh, it was more complicated then than now and after buddha after the first century or the fifth century ad then uh, uh, the or the bce uh, is that uh, people started believing in uh, abrahamic religion so that is how uh, the islam and uh, christianity uh, got uh, the existences and then the belief is that when you do deeds and then uh, if you are good deeds and go to heaven and if you are bad deeds uh, the person gets hell so in that way even uh, buddha dhamma if we really see talks about the noble eightfold path wherein the person can get into different uh, levels of existence and then and then uh, he or she can be happy in in those levels so the question comes for a non buddhist uh, to understand about what is it in for buddha dhamma even this might be questions for some of the buddhist also in the recent past because of a lot of uh, changes which have happened in the in the last 300 400 years there have been lot of translation mistranslation uh, which has happened and then uh, uh that is uh, one of the factor why there are lot of differences in the way uh 
the buddha dhamma is followed across the globe so since i i i, ha- I have a opportunity to meet uh, other buddhist in other countries and also uh, in india there is all the himalayan region follows a, a different kind of buddha dhamma which is mahayana so the 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 actual uh, the theravada thera is uh, elder and vada is the view so the theravada uh, uh, branch of uh, buddha is more found in sri lanka and myanmar and thailand and laos so i had, a, had i also had an opportunity to get in touch with the myanmar or burma and there the most of the focus is on the vipassana uh, as 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 a meditation that is a formal meditation sessions and uh, in the sri lanka it is more about desana uh, so which is good so actually if we see historically uh, ashoka had sent uh, the missionaries across uh, the places including gandhara which is in afghanistan uh and then to sri lanka and also to myanmar and laos and thailand and all that places so in that way the theravada spread uh wide and then it was taken over by mahayana in uh, from the 5th century ad onwards uh with the with the formation of padma sambhava who was in uh, nalanda university so that is the reason uh, the buddha dhamma actually went in two separate direction one uh, with a tinge of hinduism and the buddhism branch and then that is what is followed across the himalayan regions china and uh, all those uh, mongolia and all those countries uh, whereas the theravada has remained in sri lanka and myanmar and all that so uh, this is the uh, you know the varieties what we find but the question now is is buddha dhamma similar to other dhamma so what is the difference and what is the similarity in terms of similarity the buddha dhamma talks about the moral values yes so that is what we see at a surface level so that is uh, the samuchi satya or the Uh, conventional truth if we were to take that uh, buddha dhamma across talks about morality moral values which makes person good and other religion also will do that but they don't do it uh, uh, there is not moral values for the mind or the chitta whereas in the buddha dhamma the major uh, uh, major of the teachings help one a person to uh look at the the problems he is going to face by not following moral values and then how that affects him so at a very lay person level or pattu jana level or puttu jana is that the person following moral values at least can be promised a a good rebirth into a heaven or at least as a human or as a deva need not be a sota panna but he, he is following the the moral values so uh, that is what it helps him but at the at the surface level all the philosophies across the world looks the same so now what's the difference between uh, buddha dhamma and other philosophies or religions in the buddha dhamma it is majorly to the mind so if we if we could change our thoughts or the chitta we can change the gati that is the 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 characteristics of the person if we call by word gati so that is not there in any other philosophies and also it does not promise that is other philosophies does not promise how a person can Uh, actually safeguard or protect himself from reaching the apayas so uh, to understand uh, what is that it takes for us to really follow buddha dhamma we can uh, do an experiment in seeing how the universe is formed in terms of the human and 
animal existences because that can be compared also between different kind of human beings because they uh, possess those characteristics as well so what are these characteristics so now in our life we can find different kinds of animals different kind of species of birds and uh, insects and all of these kind coming as an animal but only those which have the nervous system are considered as as the as the beings so that is when we say sentient beings or uh, we call them as satta it means those which have the nervous system created uh, and not those which are like microbes and uh, bacteria and all that they don't have the nervous system developed even though they are living beings they are even more lower than these uh, kind of beings now if you were to compare in the human cycle we find that uh, people have six or seven different kind of characteristics number one is that people are in general good but depending upon the situation they will react in a way which might cause injury to themselves and injury to others the second kind is a people who are not good but they will protect those who are good to them so this is another kind of uh, people so they have uh, dvesha and moha which is uh, more than the raga the third kind of people we can find is that there are uh, they are selfish and uh, they would like everything to their advantage and uh, they don't mind abusing or using uh, uh, a bad word or out of anger they might even hit a person or whatever because they feel threatened or they feel insecure so these people will have high amount of greed which is loba and loba followed by dvesha and moha together and that causes them to sometime act like an animal the fourth kind of people who are very kind hearted and then uh, they would like to help anyone at the cost of their own lives and they will give anything uh, to the person so they give it a dana to people and also they help them in the in the overall development of that person they can sometimes be selfish based upon the raga dvesha or the raga and they sometimes might not be selfish at all but the selfishness is in terms of whom they are trying to support the next category of uh, people we can find is those who are not only kind hearted but they are very compassionate to people and they also would like to support any kind of people no matter whether they harm them or not so these kind of people would uh, not really worry about the money or the power or the position unlike the first category of people but then uh, you know they don't uh, worry and uh, they always are giving and normally these kind of people uh, if they if if they when they meet when people meet them they call them as this person or seems to be having very god like uh, attitude so some people call them as uh, you are really god sent to me so these are the words what we normally hear and the next kind of people are not only kind and courteous and compassionate and they also celebrate Uh, the achievement of people and they and they promote people and say that how they have uh, done and uh, all that and they become a coach to the people and uh, they are teachers but they don't take any kind of credit for themselves so these are the people are like devas in the in the human realm and uh, they help uh, to any extent for other people to grow so these are the different kind of category of people whom we can see in our daily life so if we see how these changes have happened and uh, why these many different categories it is easy to see that it has not happened in one life it has happened over period of life 
so if a person were to get a taste of buddha dhamma he will first understand that uh, there are many lives uh, which a person uh, leads to and uh, if you literally see the asia that is india and uh, uh, sri lanka nepal and all these countries since they follow hinduism mostly and uh, also uh, majorly buddhism in in sri lanka and in uh, and in all the theravada countries and also in the himalayan region people generally know that there is a rebirth happening because that we have been doing something or the other which will ask us to come back again and again to complete it but when we see from a westerner perspective they don't have a rebirth as a as an information or they don't even know that rebirth exists they always feel that there is only one life and uh, this is the life where can, they can do whatever they want and however they want so they can be of any of the kind any of the six kind what i mentioned and they wouldn't know out of their moha or blindness they wouldn't know that all of these qualities have been developed over a period of time not in this life but in previous lives also so when we look at the the concept of the buddha dhamma two things will come into light is that we can see different animals and uh, birds and species which have Uh, similar characteristics of some of the humans when they show up and then we can compare them and see that how it has happened so that gives us the second uh, system that there is something or some bhava or the becoming which happens the existence the jati happens and uh, those spe- those species will get those kind of uh, characteristics or the gati based upon what they have been doing so what buddha dhamma then teaches us is to find out how this happens and also why this happens and what we can do to uh, stop further becoming or further existences so this is only possible in uh, in the buddha dhamma in terms of step by step process wherein uh, the person can see for himself or herself that if there are some good things which are happening then that is uh, the kama ha- has a vipaka that is the fruits of action and that is helping the person to grow and getting all that what he or she wanted even though there is an effort from the person so the effort from the person is in terms of chitta and the bala the or the energy what the person is trying to put on that changes the way he he or she thinks and that will enable the person to change the direction and the direction changes it in in, in terms of that uh, then the person's gati or the uh, loosely said as a destiny or the characteristics also change so if the chitta changes the gati then uh, the person can really uh, change his views of uh, that is the micha ditti can be brought up out in a samaditti or the or and also the akusala kamma can be reduced in then then replaced by by the kusala kamma so these aspects can be experimented in in the buddha shasana or the buddha dhamma whereas in other philosophies it is uh, mostly to do with the shraddha wherein there is a faith and then you follow the faith and then after death you will reach the heaven provided uh, those uh, things have worked out in the favor but there is nothing to say that while you are living you can experience the same ability to see whether it is working or not so that is a major difference between other philosophies and the uh, and the buddha philosophy because you can test it and you can find out how the mind is working the mind consisting of the chitta the how thoughts are coming and how the person can change his or her thoughts to make it better in his or her life and that uh, helps him to uh, get into the sila that is the morality and then uh, samadhi that is the concentration and panya that is the wisdom so he or she can really see why certain things are happening to him or her 
why certain things are not happening to him or her and what needs to be done in order to get rid of uh, the sansara which is filled up with uh, suffering uh, so the in, another english word better word to use is the pain so that means first we have to take a pain to get the pleasure so the aswada or the mind made pleasures is the one what we are behind and that can be only found by really uh, following the buddha dhamma so in that way the similarities are only on the moral values if we see from other philosophies as a religion point of view whereas if we go in detail there is a huge difference between the buddha dhamma and the other philosophies so the buddha talks about about, about bhaveya uddha that is to remove the further existences which is not uh, possible in uh, in any other philosophies so uh, i am just opening it for discussion if somebody would like to discuss on this aspect i would welcome lasanta do you want to add something to this uh yeah vilas uh, you have been doing a very good uh, explanation about uh, different uh, religions around the world so uh, uh yes actually in the group members here we all are uh, understood about uh, these things uh, basically uh, as uh, and uh, i have a small question about uh, what do you mean by dharma yeah? so if you take a etymology of of the of the word dharma yeah? so if i say something about dharma yeah, means something about the nature of uh, bearing up Uh, on the on this existence so uh, that is what i have uh, that is the, those words i can use for for the for dharma yeah? that's that's me dharana in singhali we say dharana sabhava so uh, can you uh, could you please explain something for uh, that uh, that uh, what do you feel what do you mean by dharma yeah, yeah you are right uh, asan actually the meaning or, or the etymology in terms of uh, pali sanskrit on dhamma and dharma is that it is dhara iti dhamma dhara iti that is whatever you hold so dharana is what you are also saying so whatever is held as an existence is what is dhamma or the dharma is about so when we look at the dharma then that is why the reason there is a lot of uh, in hindu it is called hindu dharma and uh, a muslim also can have their own dharma so each follows their own doctrine so the english word nearest english word for dharma is doctrine so what it does is that uh, the dharma means the teaching plus the scientific analysis of how a person can reach a particular goal so each philosophies teach about about what it is so that is what is a nature how the nature can be felt what happens when you feel the nature and what you should do to feel the nature so these are the four broad categories what is there in every dharma or dhamma so if we look at the buddha shasana or the buddha dhamma he, the buddha talks about bhava as the major one and he also talks about how tanha can be removed and also he talks about paticca samutpada which is the basic training or the teaching of the buddha so looking from the anicca dukkha anatta to the paticca samutpada is what the buddha dhamma is all about in a in a highest level if we could put it in in instead of going to the detailed uh, level so and that is the doctrine or the that is the philosophy or the principle of each one of these aspects so the reason why this uh, dharma was used uh, earlier in the in the in the uh what i can say in the olden india or rather the before uh or during the during the life of buddha 
is to say which principle or which philosophy they are following so basically every philosophy promised these four aspect about the nature of things and then how you can feel it so that is the reason it is called dharayiti dharma so that is dharana so you hold and you exist with that and try to see how it works um Biku, I have a question. This is Oshan, by the way. Um, I'm based out of Sydney. Um, so, Biku, you, I, I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, yes, I can. I can hear you. Um, so, Biku, you talked about uh, all these hard dhammas, right? Um, but I have a question about why I should follow this dhamma. For example, say that I have a good job, right? Right. And I have a comfortable life, Correct. right? I am happy. Correct. Basically, I have all of those things. I have Correct. good friends. um my life is so full with all these pleasures around me right right um why would i give up all of this to talk about um dhammas and other religions and places why would i give that up about bhava the dharana subhava and all these things why 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 what is persuading me to do all of these things yeah very nice question so let me answer you in this way yes we are in fact including myself uh, if we were to take all of us mostly we spend our time in doing whatever you have said because that gives us instant pleasure and that is what we feel is what we are supposed to be doing in our lives that is very very correct but to do that we have to take sufficient pain and uh, when we take the pain there is no guarantee that we can get it so sometimes we get disappointed and we have no idea why this certain things have not working in the way even though we have done everything that is let us say if i were to get a job and let us say i'm working in a company and it is doing well let us say i am the head of the organization also but i cannot do anything about the market whether the whether the product is doing well or is not doing well which is beyond my uh you know my preview or my uh, accountability but however the company believes that i should do something about it so this is the problem what we generally face and we call it as a challenging situation so a, we come up with a strategy to ensure that we don't get into that so we do a risk assessment and we do lot of uh, different things to get out of it so to take all of that is a pain so since we are not aware why are we taking this pain the pleasure is that when the strategy works i feel happy for that second but then after that something else changes and then my strategy is no longer working so then again i do again i do correct the strategy and do it so whether it is in terms of job in terms of studies in terms of house in terms of the children or wife or husband or whatever relationship we are setting it is always set with an intent that it will work but the there is no guarantee that it is going to work because there is always this uh, we parinama dukkha or the changes can happen instantly and uh, things can fail So right the, but what what would you say to a person who would say that's a very pessimistic way of looking at life um we can't we can't walk around thinking that um life is going to be negative all the time yes we have to look at we have to look at the positives we have to look at the shorter term goals um we have to we have to appreciate the smaller things in life and and be satisfied with it and and go with that instead of troubling ourselves with with the bigger picture and why why not enjoy the simpler things in life and yes. think about all this and trouble ourselves into depression yes absolutely right i mean uh, i i i really have come across people who would consider buddha dharma as the most pessimistic actually it is more realistic than being pessimistic so uh, to the person who are pessimist and think that why we should also think in this way my question or my answer would have been to people is that look at your own heart are it is it really bringing discomfort when things doesn't happen 
not that you should not work like uh, even now i might be working on some projects but uh, what's the difference i am making for myself is that i am not expecting so when i ex- when there is an expectation there is this problem of either getting it or not getting it or something comes in its way and takes it away so for a pessimistic person what i would fee- what i would uh, recommend that person is that you set your expectation low don't set it high because there is uh, always this changes which happens and the changes can happen without notice whether you are uh, the person is a believer in uh, buddha dharma or not believer in buddha dharma that doesn't really matter what matter oh, so, sorry sorry to interrupt you could just a uh, light bulb just went off when you were talking so basically what you're saying is because It, the the suffering that comes my way is dependent on the expectations that i build so the bigger the expectations i build um more more discomfort or displeasure i feel so less expectations i build within my mind less discomfort and displeasure i feel so you're saying there is a place where we can reduce this discomfort and displeasure to a level beyond what i'm comprehending or a normal person would comprehend walking around enjoying some of the things in life yes yeah, so he or she can still enjoy all the things in life that is i can he or she can go to a club and have a couple of drinks and go with friends and do all the work whatever he or she is doing but without expecting so let us say this person is waiting for a a friend to arrive in a tube from sydney to let let us say perth and then uh, the person doesn't come because of something and then whether is pessimistic or optimistic it doesn't really matter at that time this person is going to feel uneasy and unhappy disappointed maybe he might give a call to that person or friend saying that why you couldn't turn up not knowing that what really caused him not coming from a place a to place b whereas if the person is setting a lesser expectation in terms of understanding that the person might come might not come and there are various factors in this person coming and meeting in that way mm. he or she can uh, reduce the discomfort when that thing doesn't happen so i would be not uh, disappointed if the person is not coming whereas i will not be jumping in joy if i see the person because those two are dependent on something else it's not dependent on whether i wish that they come or they don't come i say so expectations are built because of we give value to things i guess because i i'm giving value to meeting that person i give i'm building hypothetical values in my mind um expecting big things because of value expectations grow and attachments grow and we create discomfort and pain within our minds correct very so what you say yes very right so we can experiment that and see so when i let us say when i'm on the job i've done very well and my i expect my manager to wrote uh, sorry rate me the best and then uh, the market has turned badly this quarter so uh, my manager now says that you know what you're done well but the company is not done well so we couldn't uh, raise your wages and also we cannot promote you at this point in time so now what has happened to me i now feel cheated by the company so i have only three options left to me accept the way it is but so i will then plead with my manager that you know how much how many hours i have i have spent i have also spoiled my saturdays and sundays and uh, and the number of days i have not been with my family and uh, number 2 is that i might start applying elsewhere thinking that uh, another job is going to get me what i uh, wanted and number 3 is that you know i will become very negative about the company so these are the three alternatives what i have but if uh, if i were to really see why am i expecting out of what i'm expecting out of it i'm expecting happiness so i'm expecting happiness in something in an external thing that is always changing so right. that means i am not going to get any happiness at all because the manager might change the company might close down or the market might go down or whatever any anything can happen so in everything we do in our daily life we can see these changes happening and we can observe so the first and foremost thing what buddha dharma teaches us to observe rather than reacting is to observe 
So once we start observing, we can find that there is nothing anybody can do to change it. Because like, let, let us say today it is very hot in a particular place and we can, we can create different objects to take care of that. We can have a fan or an air conditioner or, or you know, I can go to a resort or can go into the swimming pool or whatever it is. But that's not going to change the weather pattern which has been there for today. So I can only find alternatives and make myself comfortable. So that means I am suffering somewhere to make myself comfortable. So if there was no suffering, then I didn't have to make anything called as comfortable. So this applies in everything we do. So it need not be a pessimistic person or an optimistic person, a believer in Buddha Dhamma or not. The nature, the law of nature remains the same. So when we start looking at or scratching the surface surface of the Buddha Dhamma, we can find out that these can be experimented, tried it out and seen whether it works or not. Right. So is it correct to say that things happen in the world um, regardless of whether we like it or not? And um, we tend to give value to these things that happen around us and um, we create expectations and we get attached to it. Because of that, we create suffering. So yeah. because of not knowing that the world is not to our liking, uh, things will happen um, regardless of what we think of it. Yes. Um, that would give us peace. Is that what you're trying... Is, is that, is that correct, Pante? Yes, yes, yes. I'm, I'm, uh, you are you're 100% right. So we set expectation because sometimes it works in our favor and we think that we are the people who have made that to happen. And sometimes it doesn't go in our favor, so we always complain that somebody else has come in its way and then blocked it. But actually, whether I like it or not, things work in a particular pattern or ways. As long as the conditions or the causes are there, the effect are going to be there. So Buddha Dhamma also teaches us to look at uh, uh, how the each event works. So it is preconditioned. It need not be predetermined. So what happens is that if a, if, a, if a particular situation comes in and the right conditions are there, then that kind of fruit is going to be there whether I like it or not. So that is right. What you said is right. So that, that makes us not to get attached to the conditions because when the condition changes, the, the, the effect also changes or the result also changes. Hello. Can I add something there? Yeah, sure. Please go ahead. Yeah, because uh, the people around, they believe that uh, when they do a good job, actually, they have a stable life, uh, stable jobs, and uh, they lead a healthy life. So, uh, but how can they, uh, how can they guarantee that, uh, how long they can do that? So, you know, uh, the people, they would like to uh, talk about the, uh, the patients. For example, when we talk about the a cancer patient, so how can we guarantee that they, whether I don't ha I don't have a cancer, you don't have a cancer, no. so that cannot no. uh, nobody can guarantee that no. I don't have a cancer, and uh, no. so this stability no. can be seen uh, because of the ignorance and delusion. No. So actually, they are the uh, the conditions is there all the time, no. and uh, through that we can see the anicca all the time. Uh, so that is what I, I want to add here. Sure. Yeah, see, see, nobody can guarantee anything. In fact, in in life, our our breathing itself cannot be guaranteed. Whether we're going to breathe the next moment. So nobody can guarantee anything. The the assumption what we are making is that there is always nicha. That is. Uh, Na Icha, Icha is our wish. Na is the Nyaya, that is uh, a theory that always everything will go as per our wish. So we have to change the conditions to match the, the wish of the whatever we have. So what we, if we see in our uh, daily life, as an example, if I were to give, let us take the mobile network. So the, the new invention what we have made for the last 20 years is we are now having the mobile phone and the towers and uh, there are companies who are giving the mobile, 
mobile connectivity but nobody can really promise that it works so what we have done is that we have put our backup that is something fails we have another one as a backup and that fails and something else as a backup so what we are doing is that we are trying to ensure people and machines are always available to correct if something doesn't work so if if things were working as per our liking then we didn't have to invest so much of money and time and energy to do all of this and that is what gives us a feeling of niche because now so many people are working and they are they are helping us uh, to, you know together to get whatever we want or whatever i wish so if the mobile is not working what i am supposed to do is give a call to the mobile company and then and then call up that uh, lady or the gentleman over there who is in the call center and blast him or abuse him or whatever it is and then say that uh, your company is uh, a fraud company and they are not giving proper service and he will then uh, blast his uh, technicians and then they make it working so what i just now did is to change the condition so when the condition changed my the network came back so i am now having a 4g connection and i am able to connect on the internet and it's working so i feel everything works because i want it to work but actually what has happened is that the those people who really work to get the that condition in in some place otherwise this wouldn't have happened so we all have or most of the people or rather 99% of the people have this niche sanya which says that ultimately we will make it work and that is what makes us to go behind the pleasures and ensure that we get what we wanted to get yalla santa Yes, sir. So, uh, carry on that. Actually, that that the that the question came from the the person, uh, the Kalyanamita from Australia. It's a nice question. Very nice and, question. Uh, yeah. So, uh, you can carry on. And I think whether the other Kalyanamita they have question or they want to give some idea, uh, it is it is the time. any questions from anyone okay if you don't have so i'll just continue on the on the third aspect why are we humans that's a topic so what what makes it different between a human being and others so if we see we are leading a life uh, which is far better than animals i think everybody would agree animals also have intelligence and they do they they really do their life in the way they want to do but they cannot analyze the situations and uh, humans can do it the pali word best word to be used is manusya that is mana usya that is the person whose mind is developed so mana usya is a person who has a stable mind if you if we see animals especially dogs are a better way to observe their minds are totally agitated so when a dog a sees dog b the next thing it does is to bark so that is already tuned in its mind that if it sees another dog it has to bark it has a fear that uh, the the its own territory will be lost so it barks saying that this is my territory and the other dog also says that no i didn't come here for your territory i have my own territory then it has its own food cycle so it keeps on looking for food and enjoying the food and then it has a copulation uh, time and that is what it would like to do all the time and the fourth one is is to sleep at a time when everybody is uh, is you know sleeping or awake or whatever depending upon its own fear cycle so majorly if we see animals they the 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 
the majority of uh, the activity is fear so due to the fear they have to have their own territories guard the territories and the life goes on in fear either it will be eaten away by something or it has to eat something else to to lead its life so that means there is always a fear of death every moment be it a cat or a dog or a or a let us say cow or a rat or a whatever we see including birds or amphibians to fishes to all of that they are they are targeted all the time so their mind is fully agitated and there is no way they can see what is happening because their only uh, way is to safeguard their own lives so that their mana is not developed or the mind or the chitta consists of continuous thoughts of fear whereas if we look at the humans humans don't have to be afraid in fact animals are afraid of humans if we see the world we have taken over everything whatever was belonging to somebody so that clearly shows that human beings can really do wonderful jobs in terms of innovating the way to live so that means human beings have the ability to create so that means they have the ability to think like a brahma so if there were a realm of brahma who is supposed to be creator who uh, who will relish in the creation we can see that the human beings are able to create if we also see human beings are not not only able to create they are able to create it faster and they can also innovate and they can also achieve the end result in anything they do be it buddha dharma or otherwise the human beings have the ability to think they can they have the ability to change their thought process they also have the ability to change the situations they have the ability to uh, withstand the pressure they have the ability to find out different ways to solve the problem which are also there in some of the animals like elef- elephants and we have in shark we also have in whales but not to the level of what a human can do so if we see the innovations what the human beings have done in the last uh, so many centuries or in fact before buddha to even before the gotama buddha if the earlier buddha or whatever how many life cycles we have had the manusya always has an ability to think better uh, and also reason out or comprehend and then look at life in a different way so it can be used for the rupa or the material objects or a rupa wherein the person don't have to look at the rupa but he can or she can look at getting inside and seeing what is happening within oneself so that means the human beings are better placed in both the matter and non matter aspect and what has happened is that since we have this force or the bala or the energy we spend most of the time in 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 feeding our senses and that is where we have a problem because the animals also feed on the senses human beings also feed on the senses because uh, we don't know that we are in kama loka and that is the reason the senses takes take over most of the time and then we are only feeding the senses so what remains as a, with us all the time is the memory of the past so with the memory we plan for the future and we can never be in the present because in the present moment there is no memory it is the reality what is happening so the question then comes at how do we be in the present moment is by looking at the event what is happening and since we cannot see an event because our mind is agitated we tend to behave like animal so to understand uh, uh, what it takes to be a human we need to also look at the different existences which are available and that can be seen even in the human realm of existence as i spoke to you earlier but from the buddha's point of view there are 31 planes of existences and the first one is the niraya niraya is uh, literally if we were to translate that helpless so those beings 
who are there their mind is in such a helpless state that even for a second they cannot get themselves saved in any way so there are different kind of hells which have been explained but uh, the basically what it means is that a person whose uh, ability has gone so bad while in uh, human realm of existence or a deva realm of existence or some realm of existence when he was having a very good life he or she used it for such a bad deeds that they have to then take their mind into such a horrifying state so the second level is the tirchana yoni that is where the raga dvesha moha or the loba dvesha and moha are equally developed and then these are this is where the animal always have so they have the raga dvesha moha and the moha covers the most of their part so they are totally blind on what is happening to them and that is the reason that their minds are also equally agitated but not to a level of people or the minds who are there in the niraya then there is preta which is nothing but a hungry ghost which means that they have one of these three as the highest that is the loba so while they were uh, while they were in human or other higher realms of existence they had this karma where or the kamma where uh, they did not give anything to anyone and also wanted others also to come to them so other property or other people or whatever they have somebody has also should should come to them so they always had this in their mind that if, if they don't get it then nobody else should get so that being the level of uh, loba and that is the amount of the dvesha what they had generated because of not getting what they wanted they the mind is burnt to an extent of staying as a as a as a preta because then uh, they have to keep on feeding on themselves to get whatever they want and they cannot get anything at all and the fourth one is the asura realm of existence which is nothing but demons or the titans so when we look at uh, people who are here in the human realm of existence who are very aggressive and uh, they don't care and they might hit they might kill they might do 100 different things to not physically harm but they would like to harm the person's character and they also would love to see that the person is destroyed so those kind of people who have this this malicious or a bad intent would land themselves in the asura because that mind is perfectly suited for this kind of existence then the manusya loka that is what i explained then the sixth level is chatu maharajaka deva these are the four uh, devas who who are there just above the manusya loka who are kind hearted and that means they don't have uh, that is after the manusya loka onwards till the end of the kama loka or even to the other lokas there is a reduction of lobe of the dvesha and uh, and uh, loba gets lesser into raga and after kam after the kama loka there is no raga also so what happens here is that there is uh, continuously it is reduced and reduced so each one of these loka like like in the tavatims yama tusita and all of that if we were to see because i am skipping some of these because this itself will take uh, one full session which i can have it in the next time next wednesday when we meet in terms of uh, each one of this level and how we can see it in within ourselves but one thing i want to add before i i skip this sections for a little bit is that when we uh, look at uh, metta bhavana that is when we have a uh when we uh, say let good things happen to all if we see what stands in our heart is that the heart becomes immediately very calm so you would feel or the person would feel that there is an expansion so when we want to say let bad thing happens to others we are trying to say to that 
uh, when we say that we see that within our hearts it starts burning but when we say that let good thing happen to others we can see that there is an expansion so what we can uh, really experiment in 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 each one of us is to see the brahma vihara so there are four aspect of the brahma vihara one is the metta bhavana and the second one is the uh, the karuna and the third one is the mudita and the fourth one is upekha so how do i experiment it and see so in the morning or in whenever i am sitting let us say now i uh, say to every every being whoever has helped me in my life that is my parents to the teachers to the friends to all those people whom i have known directly or indirectly whether they have done good or bad i have no idea but they all have involved with me which is the most uh, happiest thing to happen because there are people who don't get anyone at all in their lives in considering that i have got so many people who have stood by me and they have helped me including the parents if we see and if we were to say let them be happy and let them be free from suffering let them not uh, have any bad things happening to them and if we say it within our hearts and we can see that immediately the heart gets expanded we feel internally very happy sometimes it would even happen that the person might uh, start to uh, cry loudly because then uh, he cannot hold the emo- emotions and when that happens there is always a karuna which takes over wherein the person becomes very compassionate even to those people who have done some harm in the past and then he will try to forgive them for that and uh, say that let the person not do this uh, again to anyone even if he has done with intent let that that intent go away let the person get a very noble intent so when we say that within our hearts again it creates love and affection with all kind of beings so we can try it out with humans and also we can try it out to animals because that we can really see how they respond with these two being there the third one is upekha that is sorry the third one is mudita where uh, i can then see if i am rejoicing in somebody's goodness that is if a person is growing in a in the buddha dhamma or in any dhamma and he is becoming pious or a good natured person that is one aspect and then second aspect is the person is getting lot of materially sound he or she is getting whatever he or she wanted and they are getting good money or power or position and they are uh, doing very well in their lives and then they have uh, children are doing well the, they are they are able to build good homes stay good life and uh, enjoy so instead of feeling uh, uh, what i can say in, instead of feeling jealous of people if i were to feel very happy about their achievement if i were to feel jealous i can see that my heart will burn that why i am not getting it so whatever i am having i am now suffering first that is the pain will first come to me before anything could happen to them but when i do mudita that is when i feel uh, very much filled up from my heart and i rejoice in somebody's achievement it expands so i feel uh, or the person would feel that he or she has touched the sky so with uh, maitri or metta karuna and uh, and mudita the person can expand himself or herself into different dimensions and that makes him feel one with nature and once he becomes one with nature that is the time when he gets into upekha upekha is uh, is a is a stage where the where the person becomes equanimous to the situations that is he or she will not react in any way so these uh, four aspect that is uh, metta uh, karuna mudita upekha we is 
like staying in brahma realm of existence because if somebody were to do not do jhana but still he can get into the uh, second level of jhana wherein he can get into the brahma loka within himself and he can see that it works because when the heart is expanded and he doesn't have any negative thoughts they are suppressed so the chitta is now pure when the chitta is pure he or she doesn't have any kind of negativity or a, or a bad attitude or a bad manners or any kind of bad deeds at all so then if he could see that his mind has become very still or very calm so this calm nature is what the brahma vihara is all about so we can really test on ourselves these different realms of existence to, from the from the 6th to 14th till the mahabrahma realm we can we can actually test it and if somebody were to get into jhana then he or she can uh, really test within himself or herself the 15 16 17th uh, aspect of uh, realms of existence so within one's life or right now a person can experiment without knowing any jhana at all so one is the anariya jhana or the mundane jhana another one is ariya jhana ariya jhana is with ariya tangika magga understanding whereas anariya jhana is just uh, the concentration and the will power and then the meditation which will take both of them to the same level so in the next uh, session whenever uh, all are there i will uh, i will cover up on those aspect of how a, a person can move from one jhana to another jhana and also experience so what will happen in in each one of these uh, uh, the anariya or the ariya jhana but right now what a person can do is not to worry about the jhana but he can still reach uh calmness in his mind that is he is he can feel uh the cooling down effect it's like a nibbana but not really nibbana but he can see what nibbana would mean because he when he when he is uh, when he is given up the the thought about harming anyone because he knows that he is going to first harm himself before harming anyone then the person becomes very calm so why manusya loka is because all of these can be experienced so what happens is in the first four realms of existence there is no way anybody can experiment on anything because it is full of fear in the fifth that is the manusya loka there is akusala and kusala both being there that means we have good we have a very good uh, ability also bad ability to get into bad deeds and good deeds so depending upon the karma and the karma we park what we have made in the in the past lives we might be enjoying also we might be suffering but there is a way to retrospect or to uh, or to look within within ourselves or uh, to see why we are uh, suffering or why we are enjoying so when a person is uh, you know let us say if we were to see some people who are very rich but they don't get time to do any retrospection or introspection to see why they have got so much then we <coughs> then we can see that they they had a very nice pu- the punya kamma or the good deeds and they are exhausting it there are people whom we can see that they are born humans but they have to tirelessly work and still not get anything and they struggle to make their ends meet or they they struggle to get their food or the clothing or shelter or medicine or they suffer from different uh, diseases if we were to see them then again we can see that the suffering has been there because of their kamma and the kamma vipaka so they also don't get any way to experiment this because every moment they have to do something to live so there are people rich people whom we see don't get any chance to get into dhamma because they are exhausting all their punya kamma 
and there are people due to papa kamma they have uh, no ability to see why things are not working in their favor but if we were to get to an opportunity like having both the good and the bad but also have ability to be in the uh, to understand why things are happening and then if the person is able to have a ability to understand buddha dhamma or get into buddha dhamma in the first place whether it is right or wrong then get to the pure dhamma aspect of anicca dukkha anatta so we can now see how fortunate the person is because he he or she is able to cut the root uh, to uh, sorry he is he or she is able to work from the root cause of the problem instead of just trying to address uh, some or uh, here and there uh, whatever the challenges or the problem he or she is facing so in that way our life as human is very precious and wasting it does not make any sense because once our life is wasted that means we die without doing anything about understanding the bhava or existence and what caused us to first come into this life and what we have done and how we have done and what are the bad qualities or the good qualities we have taken then there is no guarantee in any way to say that whether our existence will be a good existence in future or not because unless we safeguard ourselves we there is no way we cannot uh, escape the apayas the apaya is this uh, niraya to asura realm of existence because uh, we have come from there we might have really been there some time because of our bad karma and because of a good karma we are here so uh, it is not good for any one of us to miss this and lose our life and exhaust all our punya karma and go back to the the earlier home way either in the niraya or to the asura realm of existence so it is it is very very precious every moment becomes precious for us to understand the the truth that is how the parmartha satcha is and then uh, what causes us to get into bhava jati and why we suffer the jara marada soka parideva dukkha do manasa upayasa that is most important to see because then we know that why we are suffering and that helps us to look at the the first noble truth that is there is always a pain to be undertaken to get anything in this world and then we come to know why we are why we are taking this pain to get what we want to get and then we will come to know how to exit or how to remove the pain and what the path we have to take to remove the the pain so this is a very a very nice way of actually experiencing uh what really happens with every being so in that way as humans we can then see that there is nothing to aspire or nothing to say somebody is doing well somebody is doing not well because we will understand the reality or the truth that every one of us are suffering or having pain in one way or the other it can be a uh it can be in a in a way uh, that uh, something is not working and they are suffering in one way and there are people who might be uh, getting something but they still they are suffering because they have to do all of that to actually protect themselves so this is what i wanted to share and then uh, if you have any question i can i can answer otherwise i can uh, i can end the session it is almost 8 o'clock so any questions okay so if there are uh, no questions uh, i would uh, i would like to uh, thank everyone and uh, who have attended and also to all the uh, people who have assembled here and who are listening to this desana let them all uh, be free from suffering and uh, let them all attain peace let them all work towards the nibbana and then uh, get the nibbana 
and in the future uh, sermons we will uh, also explain about how to attain uh, uh, the nibbana the process and see that uh, we all uh, uh, enjoy the fruit of the nibbana and let everybody be happy sadhu 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 and thank you everyone so i am now uh, disconnecting unless you have some questions <laughs>